Okay, we are back in the garage. We have this tractor wired up. Right now I'm gonna run through all the wiring, show you how everything hooks up, and then we'll give it a test crank. First off, obviously you've got your battery in here. We are setting this up as a negative ground. Some of the old, or they were originally a positive ground of the six volt system. We're setting it up as a conventional negative ground. Got your ground wire there, run back down to the body. Make sure all your connections are clean. Positive battery cable runs down to this lug on your starter solenoid. All right, then your yellow wire here takes battery power and runs it up and runs it to the ammeter. And that goes on the positive side of the ammeter. From the battery down there, to the positive side of the ammeter. Out of the negative side of the ammeter, in this setup we have a yellow and black wire. It runs down and hooks up to the one wire on your alternator. So what that does is that sends power up to the ammeter and through the ammeter to the other side, goes down to here, then back up to here, and that charges your battery. So that will give you, if you have battery, if you have amperage flowing to the battery, you'll have positive. If you have amperage coming out of the battery, you will have a negative reading. Okay, any loads you want to put on here, like lights, or in this case, all we have is the battery ignition, you'd come off of the alternator side of it. That way it would show whether it was charging or discharging. You know, if you have your lights on and it's not running, you should be showing a discharge. Now in this case, the load that we have is this wire here and it comes down to a keyed switch. So this is powering the switch, coming out of the switch on the on position is this red and green wire and that runs all the way up and powers your coil. And on a positive ground system, you want the positive hooked up to the to the electrical system and then your negative runs down and goes to your distributor like i said yesterday that's a internally uh, it doesn't require an external resistor for that particular regulator now your other wire down here comes off your starter solenoid and it runs up goes through the harness comes down goes around and goes to your starter switch now this switch here has a starter lug on it. It has a starting position, but you can't use it straight away on these tractors. It's like a car solenoid. You send power to the solenoid to activate it. On this, it's already got power from there. So this lug has to ground it. Where this switch would send power from your battery to that lug to fire the solenoid. That sends power. We need a ground. So we run it back to the factory switch there, which is probably the best way to do it because it does have a kill switch in it built in. I didn't remember that, but if you have it in gear, you can't accidentally crank the tractor over. So now if you ever did want to hook it to a key switch, it wouldn't be hard to put in a relay since you're 12 volt now, you could put in a relay that when you hit this, it would trip the relay and just ground. You could make the relay ground the starter solenoid. So that would work if you wanted to hook it up that way. But right now, we're going to keep it hooked up through that button. Let's see if it cranks over. Make sure she's in neutral. We'll turn the key on. Watch the ammeter gauge. It's going to discharge. That means stuff is going to the coil. So now we hit the button down here. Oh, wow. That's never cranked over like that before. That is sweet. And if you're familiar with these, the six volt starter has heavy enough windings that it will handle the 12 volts unless you crank it, crank it, crank it for a long time. So that's not an issue. So you just leave it alone. We did change the coil. One of our alternator. 
The ammeter was good as was. So now we just need some fuel to it. Well, I need to finish the cooling system. Okay, let's talk thermostats here for a second. Any cooling system like this, you do want a thermostat because it slows down the coolant flow through the deal so it can cool off properly, have time to cool off properly in the radiator. Plus, it makes it get up to operating temperature before it starts full flowing. That way, your motor doesn't run cold. Okay. Normally, you have a thermostat housing on the head where you sandwich a thermostat in. Then a filler or a water neck that bolts on. Well, this is all one piece of cast. They used a thermostat that fit in the hose. So let's go look at it. Here's your original thermostat that I pulled out of the hose. That end goes to the radiator. That end aims down toward the engine because that's a thermal spring. When it changes shape, it'll open that flapper up and let coolant go. There is a little bleeder hole right there to let some flow and let air get through when you're filling it up. Problem is these came in 160 degree. And that was because uh, your coolants back then alcohol based they didn't work as well and hold as much heat now they'd boil over actually 180 degrees is uh there's the, the 160 180 degrees is a good optimum temperature to keep wear down sludge down it's just a better temperature everything works better come back here I didn't see any built like this right offhand looking at a couple of tractor places that were at 180. Uh, there is a thermostat that fits a Renault, some kind of Renault car. I saw that uses a thermostat that goes in the hose. It's 180 degree, but I, it's not something that was available local. The part numbers I looked up, they didn't even, couldn't even order me one, so. I'm sure I could come up with one if I needed to, but I wanted something to do today. So I took and got a regular car thermostat. I don't have the slightest idea what it fits because I was just looking it up by size, but there's the Murray part number 69980. And I drilled the little weep hole in it. This was a little too big to fit in the line so I took it and took it to the belt sander, took a little bit off the outside so it's the right size. But what I did was built a couple of aluminum sleeves. Had some tubing laying around. So this will go in the upper radiator hose, the bottom end toward the head. Had to cut some notches, turned it down. So now the thermostat fits in just like that and then another sleeve got a little step there put it like that and now you basically have the equivalent of that with off-the-shelf stuff and what I'll do is shove this in there but the bottom of this against the filler neck or against the uh, I'll butt the bottom of this against the water neck on the head so the little pellet there that's temperature sensing will be right close to the hot coolant. Put this in line and with that step, I'll just put an extra hose clamp right in here. And that assembly will stay in the hose down by the head and should work just perfect. Plenty of room for coolant to flow around that since it's all got to go through that little valve anyway. So let's put that in the hose, get it back on the tractor. And there she is pushed in the hose. I don't see why that won't work just slick. All right, let's get caught back up here. Got all the wiring done, tried it out. I went and put the hood back on, cut the old uh, headlights off because they were crushed and rusted and bad shape. One thing I needed still was an air filter because I was not using the old oil bath. Got to looking through my parts bin, found a nice little foam filter for a motorcycle. That the hole was just slightly too small for the uh, pipe. So I cut a little bit off the pipe, sliced the side of it, squeezed it and inserted it in there, welded it on. Now that fits nicely. 
So we'll be able to put this pipe in there, have the pod filter up there in the tucked up under the cowl. I got a new piece of uh, metal brake lines. We'll run a new fuel line over. Now I need to tuck some wires up and we should be ready to put some gas in it and see if it runs. We are about ready to find out what's gonna happen. Battery's in there. I think there should be plenty of room to pick that battery up and tilt it out of there without having to modify the tray, so that's good. I uh, built a new fuel line because the old one was crappy. Oh, what else did I do? I put that second clamp there on the water hose to hold the thermostat in place. There's my classy air filter. I added coolant. Nothing came pouring out. Another shot of the air filter. They don't give you much room to hook that onto the carburetor. Trusty safety wire there to the manifold to hold it in place till I can find something better or build something better, most likely. There's the fuel line. Let's uh, see if it'll light up. That was a fail. Better see if we got spark. She has no spark, so we gotta dive in and see what's going on there. Why we have no fire is because this wire that's supposed to ground with the points opening and closing, when you screw the nut on there, it's grounding all the time. So we've got a problem with the uh, insulator on the inside or where the bolt goes through, so I'm gonna take that apart Get that fixed, then she should fire up. Just testing the coil. Yeah, it's got spark. All right, like I said, the issue was that stud was grounding part of the time to the case, and then that was not triggering the ignition coil. So I was trying to figure out, because this thing right here was on the inside to keep it insulated from the body of the distributor. No, I was trying to figure out how to insulate that. And it's like, why well, have the stud and then this little short wire going from the inside of the stud over to the points? So I just took all that out, took the stud out, run a wire straight through the side, hooked it to the points, then back up to the coil. It's tucked out of the way, got a zip tie in there so it won't slide back in. So now, let's see if we got spark. Push that push that starter button down there by the gear, gear shift. Oh yeah, we got spark. Okay, thank you, babe. Well, that's all it was. What? See if we can't uh, fire it back up again. Okay, what is this? Take uh, two. Take two. good cooling systems working charging systems working I'm happy there'll be lots more adventures ahead still got to do all the steering got lots of projects to do 
Thanks for watching.